gospel reading comes from Mark. Mark is my favorite of the four gospels. One, it's short. <laughs> Even if you're a slow reader, you can get through it at all in about half an hour. Two, it's a mess in that the transitions are terrible. It's not very good writing. It doesn't seem to follow in chronological order. And everybody seems not to get it. In fact, if you go to the 16th chapter, once you read the 8th verse, your Bible probably has a little asterisk and it says everything that follows isn't in the original. Because the last verse says the disciples hearing the message of the resurrection all ran away and they didn't say anything to anybody because they were afraid. And somebody coming along copying years later thought, that's a heck of a place to end it. <laughs> How did we get here if nobody said anything? Because they were afraid. Now, in the parable that I'm going to read for you, I need to set the stage for the telling of it in what has already happened. In chapter 1, it says, Jesus came preaching the gospel of God. There was great rejoicing. There was a wonderful start. People talked about him. He could work miracles. He could cast out demons. He even healed Peter's mother-in-law of some kind of fever. Uh, every time I read that, I thought maybe that was a mistake. Maybe he should have started miracles with somebody else. <clears throat> but it says she served them after she received this healing. So it starts great, but then the reaction sets in. He goes home to Capernaum, and somebody takes the roof off his house so that they can let down a paralyzed guy on a stretcher. And Jesus says to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven. Well, that caused all kinds of conversation because those who were certified to speak for God and to know the mind of God said, God can forgive sins, you can't forgive sins. Now, there's a little bit of sarcasm, I think, in the gospel writer. When they said only God can forgive sins, they really meant God and those who are ordained or commissioned or who have some kind of a certification to speak for God, they can forgive sins. I mean, how would the world be if you had promiscuous forgiveness going around? I mean, this has got to be controlled. Sin has no threat or hell any kind of fear if we can forgive one another. And it went from there to people saying, you know, he's doing all this in league with the devil. And somebody went further and said, you know, he's the devil himself. We better watch out. That word got around. And so his mother, his brothers and sisters, that's what it says, his brothers and sisters, all of his family came and tried to take him away, shut him up somewhere in an insane asylum because they said he's gone daft. Now, he's gone from the joy of preaching the gospel of God to having his own family, his own mother, that saint that is on statues in churches around the world thinking he's out of his mind. And then we come to this. Again, notice the rough transition. It just, again, like a stream of consciousness. And so here, we're going to start a new stream of consciousness. Again, he began to teach by the sea, and a very large crowd gathered about him so that he got into a boat 
and he sat in it on the sea. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. And he taught them many things in parables. And in his teaching, he said to them, listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it had not much soil, and immediately it sprang up. But since it had no depth of soil, when the sun rose up, it was scorched. And since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. And he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. 